Thank you so much for taking time to sit down with me. Oh, of course. Thank I've, you for having me here. Of course, of course. I've been wanting to talk to you. Um, we honestly, for those of you who don't know, Eugenie and I have only met like one time. I think at Playlist, right? Yes. Like years ago now. You were dressed like a Pokemon. Yes, I had my Pikachu <laughs> outfit on. <laughs> and it was only because my friend Michael Buckley was talking to you and I went over to yes, say hi and so he introduced nice. us. He's so nice. I talk to my audience all the time about getting help and... I've had videos about 5150s and all sorts of and treatment options. And so today I just really wanted to talk about your story and how you ended up getting help. Because I know a lot of us are scared to reach out. Yeah. And I totally get that because I, I think sometimes it can be kind of so hard to reach out and mm -hmm. kind of hard, I guess, to know like what to expect and Yeah. And to admit that you have a, yeah, an and issue to it. and to say like <laughs> it warrants help because a lot of you are worried, what if they don't take me seriously or... Yeah. What if I'm not sick enough? We have a lot of those concerns. Yeah, and I would kind of feel some of those too. Yeah. But I guess like for me, kind of like, it would probably sound really crazy to a lot of people because I guess for so long online, there were so many people like making videos and all my comments were just mm -hmm. kind of spammed with like comments about my body and telling yeah. me that I needed help. But I guess sometimes it's still kind of hard to see things the way other people do sometimes. At least yeah. like for me it was. And also I guess kind of like, it's, it's like you said, it's just kind of, I guess, hard to actually like realize and admit to yourself that. Well, we yeah, and the voice, sometimes. the eating disorder voice tells us we're not sick. Yeah, and exactly. It, like it's always, and we know that. We talk about it all the time, how it'll tell us that we, it always has a different goal that we can never achieve. And it, once we achieve that, it's the different goal. And it's, that's the, that's why eating disorders can be so difficult to reach out and get help for. Mm-hmm. Totally. Sorry. So oh, back no, you're to all good. So back sorry. to when you were getting. <laughs> I feel like I'm like, so bad at talking about it sometimes. Still, so no, sorry. It's I'm, okay. It's it's yeah. It can be really difficult. It can be, but yeah, actually, like, um, it was kind of, I guess, well, the. There was like a conversation with me and my mom, which she kind of has brought up some concerns to me in the past, which mm -hmm. online, like I never really talked too much about that because yeah. like, what's your personal yeah, stuff? Yeah. And yeah, but there has been, I guess, like sometimes in the past where she would like mention to me um, that she was kind of, I guess, seeing that I was having a problem mm -hmm. and that it was, I guess, getting to not the best point. Yeah. She worried about you. Yeah. And that she was like worried and... She, and I guess, like, a lot of the time I would kind of try to, like, brush it off and be like, well, it's fine, you know, mm -hmm. like, I I'm okay. Like, yeah, don't worry all. about me. Yeah, don't worry about it. And then I guess, like, kind of, you know, she would just kind of be, like, I think, like, still concerned, but I guess you can't really force anyone to No, and I think that's the, get... I've talked about that a lot, that you can't force anyone into treatment because exactly. you can't make them get better. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you, you're the one that has to do the work mm -hmm. and you're the one that has to be there. And that's what I'm always telling everybody. You can check in, you can assist. So what was the conversation with your mom like, if you don't mind sharing? Oh, yeah, of course. So then there was actually one day, though, where I guess things were starting to get to a pretty bad point. Mm -hmm. And she, like, had a conversation with me of just, like, you know, like, you really, like, need to, like, stop, stop this. Like, you really, mm -hmm. at this point, like, need to do something about this. And... You know, actually, she was kind of, like, crying that morning, and it makes me yeah. feel really bad seeing that. Cause of course, she's worried never, about you. Exactly. Yeah. And I guess, like, I was kind of, you know, like, I guess it was still kind of hard for me to, like, realize. And it's hard, like you said, like, even reaching out to get help, and it's kind of scary, I think, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, from talking to her, I guess, like, that day, too, and just kind of seeing how much, like, it, I guess, was hurting her. And also that, I guess, at that point... I was kind of seeing that, like, okay, maybe I finally, like, should do something about this. Yeah, you were, like, so, coming around to the yeah, idea. Yeah, exactly. So then I guess, like, then, yeah, that day I kind of agreed with her of, like, okay, I'll, like, go see a doctor and, like, I guess kind of begin. Mm -hmm. And is that <laughs> how it happened to... then? So that was actually what our plan was going to be. And actually we were going to go back to Connecticut for me to, like, start this. Because mm -hmm. And I there guess, are some like... good treatment centers over there that I know of. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so actually, like, and I was actually born in, like, Massachusetts originally. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. then we figured, okay, we, we know some doctors there. And I guess sometimes, too, where you're just kind of, like, more familiar with home. Like, because yeah. I guess in L.A., like... It's, a re it's really nice here and everything, but I've only really lived here a couple of years. I don't really have doctors I know out here. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's kind of scary sometimes, it's like even more so. Like in a when, new area, I don't exactly. know anybody. Yeah, I'm away from home. Totally. I can still feel that way. So then um, actually there was like a day where I was, um, I had some people that, um, we were kind of friends at the time. We weren't really like as close, I guess, as they 
<laughs> we'll kind of make things into later. But they invited me to um, like go out with them. And they told me that we were going to an escape room. Okay, I've never done one of those. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I did like, I think like, I think like one. Okay, they sound like fun. But so that's, so they invited you out, yeah. There are a lot of like puzzles and stuff, so. Yeah, you have to like yeah, solve the to riddles like, to yeah. get out. <laughs> Very cool. So that's what I thought we were going to. And I was kind of like, okay, like, you know, um, I'm going to their place. We're going to go to an escape room. Like, cool, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so then I ended up going over there and um, everything like seemed normal. Then they kind of like sat me down and we were talking pretty normally. Um, then they kind of did start bringing concerns up to me. Okay. But, and the thing is, like, at the time, you know, I just had a conversation with my mom about it. Like, yeah. I was kind of more open to talking about things. So. That's good, yeah. I did kind of. Yeah, like, like, I know. Yeah, it was still, like, I guess it's still kind of, like, hard to talk about at first, like, especially. But I was kind of, you know, telling them that I was thinking about getting help and was, like, mm -hmm. op more open to that. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, like, you know, at the time I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, there are concerns. Like, I appreciate them caring mm -hmm. um but this was literally the first time that any of those people ever brought any kind of concerns up to me i actually think like actually now i'm like thinking back there was like one time maybe mm -hmm. like a couple of years ago where two of them like texted me like one thing and okay. at the time i kind of was just like oh i'm fine like, yeah, whatever. like don't worry yeah. yeah and that was pretty much it never anything in person or anything like that like literally they did not bring up any concerns to me so um you know this is, I just figured, okay, like maybe now at this point they're concerns. But then um, there was one more person that was also going to be there that I guess they were in the text conversation, but they didn't end up showing up. Okay. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, so um, sorry, by the way, if I'm like dragging the story out or anything. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> so then um, basically I saw one of them left for a second. I figured maybe they were going to get that person. Mm -hmm. I was starting to think, okay, things seem a little bit weird. Like they told me the escape room was at like 115, I think, or something. Like it's... Yeah, it's like have to get going. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so then, so were I you figured, at someone's house? Yes, we were actually. Oh, okay, because I was thinking you were at the place. Oh okay. no, actually, we met first at their apartment. One of them left, and I figured they were going to get the other person that was supposedly going to be showing up. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, I see that these two other ladies come in, and I was kind of not expecting that. I didn't really know who they were. Mm -hmm. And then um, it turns out, I guess they were um, two. I don't know if they were like social workers or they worked with some mental health company. I don't. It could. I mean, from what I know, and is that if, like, let's say I was worried about you, right? And mainly the way that I see this usually playing out is if it's like your mom was yeah. really worried and you lived together, yeah. And she was like, "We need to get you in," and you were like, "No, no, no," and she was like, "I'm worried about your safety," blah blah. blah. Yeah. Then you could call. Um, the police or the pet team it's called the psycho uh, oh, psychological okay. evaluation team pet um it might have been them then. so my guess would be it's probably the p the pet team okay yeah that's that makes sense okay so, so these two women come in and... yes so then you know they kind of like then they were like oh hey we, we know we need to talk to you like do you prefer that your friends are here or not here so i was feeling then kind of like you're okay, like about what do like, they tell you what was going on well then like i guess we're like my my friends at the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. were um bringing some of these concerns to me I figured okay like I guess it's got to be something about that but I at first I was kind of like I thought they just wanted to talk to me I didn't like this was like really catching me off guard I don't know what was going on so then like the ladies were kind of like hey like do you want to talk to us with your friends or without your friends because like, we need to talk to you mm -hmm. and I was feeling kind of like like I was still kind of I guess trying to you know be like okay like I guess um hopefully nothing bad is going to happen here. Like, I don't really know what's going on. Yeah. But I felt kind of, I wouldn't guess they, like, betrayed, like, exactly, like, because I didn't really even know what's going on yet. Yeah. But I was kind of like, uh, I wasn't expecting this. I'll just talk to them alone. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll just talk to them by myself, but that's okay. Because at this point, I'm just kind of, like, thinking this is a little weird. Yeah. So then, like, they sat me down. They kind of were asking me, like, some questions about, like, my weight and, like, all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't want to say anything, by the way, too triggering yeah, to anyone. Yeah, no, no numbers. So, we just don't do yeah, any numbers Yeah, definitely would not mention that. Stuff. I guess just kind of, you know, related to that topic. Yeah. And um, I didn't really know, honestly, like being completely honest, like how much like I, I wanted to share with them just because like I don't know these people Yeah, they're all. brand new to you. Yeah, they know it's hard enough to, to open up to a therapist, let alone, exactly. and you've known them for a while. Because <laughs> that's the thing. It's like still, I think when you kind of like, you don't really know somebody, mm -hmm. um, you don't, you don't really know how um, it's going to go and you don't really know they're gonna understand or what yeah. they're 
gonna do so it was very like scary to me so I was I guess kind of just trying to like you know be calm and everything and mm -hmm. I didn't really want to like fully tell them like everything that maybe I was feeling or everything that I guess like I guess in a way I just kind of wanted to like leave then and I was of course feeling so really uncomfortable yeah so then um you know I explained to them like you know I actually just talked to my mom this morning um I do have plans to like go see a doctor um and like I didn't know exactly when we were going home. You know, I asked my mom about yeah. it. She was like, no, I was planning on flying you home sooner. Yeah. But at the time, I did tell them. I was like, oh, I think maybe in like a month or two. Because, well, you know, yeah. it's still it's so it, scary when it's so new to you. So And it can be scary to to even admit that you're going to get help. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I know a lot of my patients have over the years said like, to think that it's to know that you need help is hard enough to imagine doing it that day is even harder totally and it can feel really scary definitely and like that's like very much how i was feeling so i guess i was telling them that and then they um they came back and then they were like we think your friends have some concerns too so then um they had them come in and also sit down and they were asking them some questions i mentioned it again about my mom and it was mm -hmm. really weird because i think one of them even said that like I have like a script of what I say. Like I always say the same thing, like I'm gonna get help, I'm gonna do this and that, I'm fine. Like I say the same things. They're also telling the mental health, um, I don't really know yeah, professional, the professionals, health, professional. whatever. They're telling them that and it's like, it's confusing to me because I don't remember ever telling them or really telling anyone I was gonna get help. Like I don't yeah. remember ever saying that. And then they were also kind of making all these claims about my mom and about how almost like she's like abusive almost how um she um like i don't know what, i don't even remember exactly what they were saying but how basically i wasn't gonna get help and how she was definitely like not, not being not help like almost enabling bad behavior yeah. or something yeah. and even like they were saying i think some bad things like my brother and oh, like geez. my family and um like it was it was crazy so then like um i guess like from their concerns um like well what they were telling the mm -hmm. mental health professionals uh -huh, uh -huh. um about like the situation um oh yeah and there was actually another thing where they mentioned this to them like they said we've tried talking to you so many times like you don't ever listen you say this all the time and it's like it was very like confusing to me because they've literally never brought any concerns up to me before other mm -hmm. than like those two text messages by two of the people like years ago yeah so it's like never in person or anything like that and it's yeah. like i feel like Sometimes, like, having, like, a talk in person with somebody could be more, 100%. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I feel it's like... it's hard enough. Exactly. Because, like you said, it can feel very... Like, we've talked about this a lot on the yeah. channel, too. Like, it, uh, speaking openly about a struggle that you're having can make you feel really vulnerable. Yeah. And there's a lot of shame associated with eating disorders specifically. We all know our eating disorder voice will tell us over and over again, like, we're okay, it's not bad, you're not sick enough, people don't understand. Exactly. It, it's all these things that these, it lies to us, apparently, you know, essentially. But it's like, that's really difficult. And for someone to, it's easier if someone comes in and says like, I'm just really concerned about you and exactly. I care about you, how can I help? Is a much better way to maybe talk to you versus a text exactly just, just saying so then like they were going yes yeah, so they were saying that and it's like i was just so confused because i'm like you guys have not talked to me about this in person i don't know what is going on i don't know why you guys why they're saying that so if they're telling like the um the mental health professionals this and uh -huh. i um i felt kind of like trapped them because i was kind of like well it's like how many people showed up like four people i guess mm -hmm. and it's kind of their word against my word and yeah chances are they're not going to take me too seriously at this point where there's like four people that are on like you know they're all kind of on the yeah. same side there so, so what happened then then they told me okay you know like we're gonna have to like make a decision and that's it where we had to make a decision and then um like so then from there, like, I guess they go and they go outside, they do what they're going to do. And I was kind of like, I, I kept telling them, like, hey, is there, like, is any way that I can, like, just, you know, contact my doctor in Connecticut? Yeah. Like, I am going to get help, but it's just that's what I feel more comfortable doing. And I was telling, like, my friends this as well, yeah. but, like, it just felt like no one was listening to me. And um, I guess eventually they decide, like, yep, you have to listen to us. You have to basically go to this place so I don't know like where I'm going um they like take me outside 
and they put me in like restraints. Oh, they strap you. Yeah. yeah. So it was like a 5150. Yeah. Which, which we've talked, I've talked about this a little bit in the past. I know many of you have been in situations similar to this, um, whether it's because we were suicidal, self-injury, eating disorder, all sorts of different reasons, feeling really depressed. Um, it can be traumatizing. It can be. So then like they put me in like, like a stretch or whatever after mm -hmm. I'm like in the restraints. Yeah. And they I put you... I used to you... work at a hospital, so oh, I've okay. seen people come in. I know like exactly what you're talking about. And... Yeah. Yeah, so then it was really crazy. There was one guy there that was like, I guess one of the people that had to like watch me as mm -hmm. I was back there. And he actually seemed really nice. Like he was kind of like, oh, like, you know, I hope it again is okay for you. Because it sounds to me like you got like screwed over here. Like yeah, it kind of bamboozled a little bit. Yeah. And then he was like, well, yeah, there's not really anything you can do like once they make that decision. But just like explain to them the situation. I'm sure it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So I was still kind of like honestly really freaked out because like they take your phone away. I can't call my mom anymore. I have like no access to her. Yeah. Uh, anything. Did um, they put you in the locked ward then? They take you into the hospital? Yeah. And like, it, I guess it's like a mental hospital. I don't know. Like, yeah. When, when we do get 5150, unfortunately, they don't take you to like a uh, eating disorder treatment center yeah. or... Any, they take you to a hospital, and in Los Angeles County, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of uh, psych wards. Um, that's something that I struggle with as a professional in the area is like, if a patient of mine is having a hard time, for them to have to go to a to be fifty one fifty, um, which I've never had to do in my private practice, by the way. Um, but I don't have a lot of options, and it can be really scary because it's in kind of like dodgy parts of town, and you sit. Um, if you take yourself to the hospital, you often sit with a lot of homeless people waiting in the waiting room and, um, and floridly psychotic people who are on the psych floor itself. Um, so it can feel really difficult if we just feel suicidal or if we've been 5150 against our will, um, for eating disorder reasons, we're in with everybody. Yeah. Is it, was that kind of oh, what totally. it was like? It's yeah. like, once you get there, it was like, um, it's, it's, very scary like you see yeah some crazy things going on and um like how was for me like once they kind of I had to wait a couple of hours I guess to like get in the room mm -hmm. um and then like once you get in there um and it's no offense to like any of these people at all well, no you it's know, just not the right fit yeah right? like you're not dealing with psychosis exactly and that's the thing and it's like you know I'm sure a lot of these people like they are dealing with like their own problems and like, I really hope, you know, they do be yeah, able get to help get help for that. Totally. But um, I think, like, kind of when you've never been in, like, a situation like that, because I would see, like, um, basically there was, like, a bunch of beds, probably, like, 16-ish beds. Mm -hmm. That's um, about right. Which they're literally, like, usually well, between 10 and 20. Are they usually rock hard? Or is that just... They're always rock hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they're, like, covered in that was. plastic yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, like, nothing to do. Just, like... Yeah, and there's, like, one little blanket and one yeah. pillow. And the, like, there's oh. bad TV. It's just there's nothing. And it's, like, nothing there. It's, like, you just kind of sit in the room going crazy. Did um, you have groups, at least? No, we actually didn't even have groups. So we literally just had, like, nothing there. Basically, How like, the many first, days were you there? Sorry. I ended up actually getting able to leave a day early because my mom ended up... Perfect. So you're there for two nights? To, yeah, but it felt like forever. I was going to say, that feels like... Well, yeah, it's I crazy. Because you can't really sleep if you're not... You don't feel safe. Because the thing is, like, what I would see is, like, there was just a bunch of you, like, like kind of, like, screaming. And mm -hmm. there was, like, one guy. And I'm sure he was, like, a good person and all. But yeah. he was telling me how, um, like, he just got out of the county jail. And um, then he was moved here, I guess. He's like, how many times have you been here? And oh, it's geez. like, I've which, never... Which does happen because if you guys don't know, the way that our system works is if you are imprisoned, like, let's say the police pick you up for something, but it turns out that it's because of a mental illness, it's not because you're just committing a crime or something like that, then they'll ship you over from the jail where you stay for like 24 hours until they can get you transferred, then they transfer you over to the hospital. Um, and they put you in the psych ward again with everybody else. And this is why a lot of you have told me that 5150s for you have been more detrimental than actually beneficial to treatment. Oh, yeah. um, because it's like traumatizing in and of itself and you don't have any rights and it can feel very totally disempowering, I guess, is the best way. I completely agree. Like, I don't know. I literally kind of felt like in danger sometimes because it's like, there's people like banging on walls. Like everyone was like like banging and like screaming. And then right before I left, I was like, yeah, because it was just like, I, I guess like they had kind of have some therapists, like just kind of go make sure that like you're ready. Like there was one guy, I think they asked him like, do you still feel like hitting people with cars? Cause oh, no. that's like the thing. Well, but that's his, that, yeah. that's when you have um, like, so 5150s, if, if for those of you who don't know, and maybe you don't even know, cause like yeah, this isn't something you're used to, but. <laughs> 
we have to 5150 someone as a mental health professional if they're a danger to themselves mm -hmm. or if they're a danger to someone else. And so he was a danger to someone else because he felt the urge to hit someone with yeah, his car. Yeah, because I guess that's the thing is some people, that's where like in my opinion, um, which with those people, again, like not that it's at all their fault or anything like that, but I kind of think it would be like in my opinion anyway, like a better mm -hmm. idea to maybe like separate people that could be a danger to others just because like you don't always yeah. know like it should what's be gonna... danger to self danger to others. <laughs> right <'Cause it's> like, <laughs> which totally makes logical sense hurt, like other people it's yeah. like it's a little bit scary sometimes like when my mom would come in to visit actually like they don't know let her stay what well, i had to go outside and there's like a line yeah, that little mm -hmm. yeah and it, it, you can only talk to her for like literally like two minutes i was say i think you get like 10 minutes yeah and like she heard i think it was the guy that was like going in everyone's beds like he was like scraping like crazy and then she was like are you even safe in there yeah, and it can feel really like, scary. Yeah, it, definitely. So after um, after the fifty one fifty was done and you were out, yes. Then what happened? So then, it, yay! Yeah. I don't know, like crazy. <laughs> I don't know what to call them. Like not like crazy place, but you know, it's it's scary. It's a scary like, place. Yeah, a lot of you've told me you've been in that similar situation. Yeah, where it's just so terrifying. oh, it's yeah, it feels like very really kind of like traumatizing. I, I felt. Yeah. But then, like, actually, we just kind of ended up, like, flying right back to Connecticut. Okay, good. And I did end up meeting with a doctor, and um, they agreed that I should, like, pretty much have to go into a program at that point. Yeah. And um, luckily, it was, like, at my own will, so I didn't yeah, have so to... Yeah, so got to decide. Yeah, to I got see. to, like, decide if I was going to or not, which I think is a lot better than, in Definitely. my opinion, just being, like... Well, you can't force someone. Yeah, exactly. Um, I notice you smile a lot when you talk about hard things. Is that how you deal with I it? I think sometimes. <laughs> I know it probably seems like really weird. No, I just, but... <laughs> I think a lot of people do that. That's even like comedians make jokes about yeah. serious things to make light of it. And I've noticed when you're like, it was bad. Yeah, I guess and that's I'm kind like, of what I do. Yeah, that's okay. I was just yeah. curious if you noticed. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's I don't even notice that I'm doing it, but. It's okay. Do You don't have to change. Oh, okay. I was just curious about <laughs> but it. Yeah. Know. So, okay. So we're in Connecticut. We so see our doctor. in Connecticut, yeah, see my doctor. And they, yeah, so they end up saying, like, yep, you know, you're going to, like, go into, like, a program and yeah. do all that. So then I was there for a while, which I feel like it still is, like, kind of, it's still a scary thing, I feel like, going in. It's, luck it's luckily, I think, like, a lot, like, well, I also, I don't know, I kind of feel like it also kind of from that experience, it makes it kind of scary because you don't really know yeah. what's going to happen next. And you don't really ever want to be in, like, that kind of situation ever again. <laughs> At least that's how I felt. Yeah. But, um, yeah, basically then, then I did go into a program for all of that. And I definitely think it's still kind of hard where, like, you know, you've never really gotten help for anything before. Yeah, and... first time can be really hard. Yeah. And especially because they take away take your on. ability to do anything. Yeah, because like you have <laughs> even though you it's have to get, like free bathroom will, privileges and trust me, I worked in an eating disorder treatment center for I'll many years and I is. followed you people like you into the bathroom oh. and you're like, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, like the observations yep, and all of that. Yep. So you know that's a little bit like different and it's um, hard. Yeah. And it's like I get why they do it because I think it is, you know, they have like everyone's best interest, which is really of good. Course. But but the, did your lot. eating disorder like rage? Were Sometimes, you, like, yeah. yeah. Like a lot of people get really angry, and it's hard. And... Yeah, like I, um, I guess like I tried to, you know, because they all were really nice people there, which is good. Of which course, makes I it, can't like... even imagine you being mean, by the way. No. <laughs> but sometimes, and I hear from all of my viewers that like we don't even feel like ourselves because yeah. they've like taken away our way to cope. So like I would never like... like get angry or anything, but I definitely was feeling like really like sad a lot of days. And yeah. It's like, that's the thing. I guess you kind of do feel like really kind of like not even like yourself some days because mm -hmm. it's like, you do kind of feel like so much is like taken away from you. Yeah. And, um, and also like, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, it's just like a lot on you at once. And yeah, I mean, and it's constant therapy, which yeah. is good. Yeah. But it's like, it's intense and it they is, call yeah. it, you know, intensive treatment for a reason. Um, so you were there for two months, three months? I was there actually like, um, I think like about a month. So okay. it wasn't too long. And after that, I just kind of had like doctor's appointments. And okay, perfect. So you kind of like, like titrated down. Yeah. So do you still, are you still in therapy then? So right now, I guess I'm not really like in like a super constant therapy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But when I ever like do feel like I'm struggling or like, need to talk to somebody yeah then luckily i did meet like um a therapist where like she was really nice when i was in that program and mm -hmm. i'm able to like talk to her oh nice. need to, like message her or anything yeah. like that so i definitely think like when you do meet someone that's like really nice and like you with. connect well then that makes it easier then i think i guess just kind of finding like a good fit and all of that so yeah. i think that and can recovery is a process too. yeah like i'm sure you have your good days and your bad days yeah totally i think like definitely some days can be easier than others and yeah some days can i guess still be kind of hard of but, course yeah yeah and i think it's like 
it, it can be hard to be online also and have people weigh in on totally. your treatment. And we all know that everybody's situation is individualized. But thank you for sharing your story. Oh, of course. I, I know a lot of us talk about, and I've talked a lot about treatment, getting treatment. Um, and I just really wanted you to know what it could really be like and what, what a 5150 can feel like for those of you who maybe haven't been in that situation um, so that we kind of have a better understanding from, from all perspectives. So thank you. Oh, of course. Thank you for you know having me on to talk about it. Of course. So. I think it's important that we we understand how how it is and what it can be like. Because I've worked in the facilities and I can talk about it from that perspective, but yeah. I can't talk about it from, from the person who's going through it. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, and we did some videos over on Eugenia's channel. So you want to, uh, I'll put the links in the description and at the end of this video, so you can click there and check them out. Thanks again. Oh, thank you. Of course. And we'll <laughs> see you next time. Bye.